Okay, Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. <clears throat> and the handsome young fellow is uh, David C. Farmer. Uh, he's a lawyer and uh, he's the president of the uh, Screen Actors Guild. That is something local. Uh, <clears throat> so we're talking today about filmmaking in Hawaii after COVID. This is a very important discussion because it has a lot to do with Hawaii's economy. Uh, welcome to the show, David. Thanks so much, Jay. Great to be with you. So there was an article in the Advertiser a few days ago that was really, really interesting and provocative about the, the notion that although we suffered greatly in terms of uh, filmmaking and film, I want, to say, I want to say income to the state over the, over the time of COVID, at some point, uh, I guess uh, in the summer, September of uh, 2020, uh, it all changed. And instead of being afraid, um, Hollywood came to us as never before. Can you talk about that? Well, yes. Uh, like the uh, visitor and uh, hospitality industries worldwide, uh, entertainment, performance, live, taped, whatever's, was totally decimated by COVID-19. It was destroyed. And, uh, but, you know, speaking domestically, uh, there were early efforts to, on the one hand, from the performer's point of view, make, uh, given the COVID uh, situation, to make safe sets a priority and to uh, examine more of the, the streaming uh, 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 portals for getting the product over to the public. And, um, you know, it, there's that Jim Morrison song about, um, I think it's Writers on the Storm, has that lyric about an actor all alone. And the basic, you, there's this pent up demand to consume this stuff. But when you think about all of the actor energy in this globe, on this globe, uh, needing to perform, you know, to be. Otherwise, an actor all alone is got, with, with no audience, nothing, right? Um, so there's pent up demand on both sides of the screen. And it, it, it would not be denied. Well, it's interesting. You know, you, you mentioned that and immediately uh, what comes to mind is Broadway. Broadway, a, a juggernaut of, uh, of acting and, um, and performance and, and engagement with audiences and alike. Uh, Broadway, an incredible experience. I'm sure you feel the same way about it. But what, oh. what is really regrettable uh, is that in, you know, in, the, in the case of Broadway, you have people who left the industry. Yes, said, their careers were just—that's yeah. right. Their careers were destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Does that happen in uh, in in making films too? It hasn't been as dramatic because I think um, there, you know, Broadway is a one uh, well, live theater is is it's just a whole different deal. Um, there are ways in in film to kind of a, a adapt i think a little easier as a, as a performer and you know the fact of the life if, uh, of, of life is and performers of all kinds is that it doesn't matter how successful they are every one of them is waiting for the phone to ring between gigs uh you know and so unless they're locked into a long-term uh tell 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 series or if they're lucky enough to hit a a, a franchise film vein but basically uh, it's the most insecure uh industry most insecure job that anybody can have on the other hand if you look at uh, producers directors uh, what do you call it middle middle management in the production of movies uh once you are anointed once your talent is recognized a you're pretty sure you're going to get jobs and b you're pretty sure you're going to make really good money isn't it true? It's it's not the same kind of what do you want to call it on again, off again experience that an actor has. That's that's true, and um, you know I think act, actors and professional athletes uh, share similar economic uh, realities. Um, you know, and uh, there's there's no um, you know sometimes for a performer as for an athlete, there's no coming back from basically stepping in the in the mud. Um, I would say, you know, the number of, you know, Spielbergs at L uh, is still, you know, count on a hand, on one hand. Um, and, and, you know, all, all the people in sports and in uh, showbiz, uh, no matter how successful they are, they really need to plan carefully 
uh, their money because it's it's not necessarily an old, never ending uh, tap. So, well, I you know I wonder. I mean, you're an actor, and um, you're the president of the Screen Guild. Um, but uh, I'm I'm just wondering if if you have been affected in your the potential of having acting gigs here during the off again on again experience that the industry had in 2020. Well, I uh, have um, been uh, I, I had an audition for Magnum PI. I had an audition for film. Uh, you know, and, and so much has to do with um, your agent uh, being proactive. And, um, and I have a, a good agent who, who sent me up. Here, here's the thing, this, you know, this is gonna sound a little bit like whining, but you know, I whine, but um, <laughs> is that, if, especially when you when, take Magnum PI, just for example, Magnum PI has been described as Baywatch with detective, you know, that, and if you're, if you have a hard body and you're 23 years old and you look great in a bikini, man, you probably got plenty of work. Also, uh, frankly, there's a demographic issue for not that I, I don't do background work, but uh, I don't quite look like the national idea of somebody who lives in Hawaii. So both age as well as ethnicity is not a that doesn't open a lot of doors for me. <laughs> And, 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 you know, and actually in Hawaii, our, our, our members are primarily uh, what used to be called extras, but now are called background actors. And um, they, for the most part, don't have lines. They don't, they don't really, and they're, they're happy with it. They're, it's, it's widely viewed uh, in, in Los Angeles that we have hobbyists here. We don't really have professional actors. And it's kind of true. What can we do about that? You know, I, we, there's a lot to talk about here. We'll never finish uh, in a half an hour. But, <laughs> but you know, what? Um, I, I know people. You know, people who've been pulled in on these, these gigs. I, I one of one of the lawyers that I worked with at one time. He was pulled in on a gig for five O, and his job was to fall in front of a car and die. And right. uh, he was on the screen for all the thirty seconds, and he got paid well for that. But mm -hmm. that was the no lines. The extent of his acting. And right. I'm saying, this is, is does this an industry make? What can we do to train actors? What can we do to get jobs for actors? What can we do to build productions that will, you know, enjoy local actors? Uh, are we on the road for that? Or are we just, um, you know, tagging along behind whatever Hollywood wants to do? Well, a couple of things. One is, I think, you know, there's no good acting, no good productions without good scripts. And I think, you know, if you compare uh, the Korean, South Korean uh, film industry to Hollywood's product of the last, I would say, 10 years, uh, it's so head and shoulders. They've taken the best of Hollywood production values and they've crafted, they're not heavy duty, they ain't Shakespeare, but they are compelling. They are, they have a heartbeat. And that's something that's been sorely missing in California, Hollywood productions it's 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 go boom 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 it's 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 action stuff uh and it's met you know the demographics is what at the oldest 30 years old uh so um that and the other factor is that the industry uh for an actor exists in two places california and new york now filming is done all over right but the heartbeat, the nerve centers of the industry are in those two places. So if you are an actor or a wannabe producer, uh, where do you go? Y you go to New York <laughs> or you go to um, Los Angeles. And it, 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 if, if on the other hand, you are uh, happy and there's, I'm happy. Look, I, I, jump, I jumped out of New York City in 1967 Number one, because it was a dirty, filthy city and it was dangerous and it wasn't it had no quality of life. I had visited Hawaii the year before and I said, I'm going back there. You know, so so uh, that's and I at that point, I I willingly and gladly gave up aspirations of being a, a, a working actor, you know, and 
in Hawaii, I've done, I've done television, I've done film, I've done theater. I've been able to do everything of the product itself that drives you to be a performer. And I haven't had to put up in New York City or Los Angeles. So, you know, it's a trade-off. And I, I think um, that doesn't mean that locally written scripts about Hawaii uh, aren't possible and necessary. Uh, but that's, that's always been a kind of dream. Uh, and it's, uh, it's been close to it, but, but not, and certainly not in volume. This, I, don't, I don't think Hawaii will ever be a, you know, competitor to New York or Los Angeles. Why not? Let me, let me uh, offer some thoughts and see what okay. you think. You know, on the George Clooney movie, um, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, it, it didn't accurately capture what happens here and the rule of per against perpetuities, uh, you know, for <laughs> landowners and what have. But, but, you know, it was one of those thousand stories that define Hawaii. Um, that was our story. They did it. They brought mm -hmm. some names in, uh, you know, they, they, they brought in some production values and they did it. Um, we have a thousand stories like that, or at least 999 left. Yeah. Um, and we have, we have a, you know, a fabulous melting pot of uh, ethnicities and cultures here uh, that is of interest. It is of interest. And mm -hmm. we could do that. We have the camera people. Uh, we have the technology. We, we, have, we have the appreciation of values. I don't know about script writers. Maybe that's uh, something that has to be learned or focused on. Um, why can't we build an industry here that can make first class movies uh, that compete with the best of them? Why can't we do that? Uh, you would know the difference and maybe you could contribute some of that heartbeat. Well, again, the business is the business and it is reality still is these are productions put together by committees with casting dependent upon name recognition and what kind of a box office they're gonna draw. That's still the reality of American products. And you know, uh, uh, what you're talking about is of a whole different, different fit, uh, ilk. You know, it's the, it, and you're lucky if you get any quality in that kind of a system. You know, it's interesting you, you mentioned Descendants because Clooney uh, directed David Strathorn in um, the uh, Good Night and uh, Good Good Luck and whatever it was about Edward R. Murrow, and it turns out that David is part Hawaiian, and why he didn't cast David rather than George in that role comes down to a very simple reason: uh, money. Uh, and re name recognition and potential box office. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, the guys with the potential box office, they they know how to act usually. Yes. A and and acting really does help. I mean, you know, when I watch cable, and I don't want to get to that these days. The, my first question is: Are these people capable of acting? Yes. Um, and so, and, and frequently these days, you find that they're not. Right. Anyway, so bottom line is, uh, I want to ask you you know, how things have changed in COVID cause of cable. I mean, you talk about, uh, you know, the market, uh, the other side of that equation, the people, you know, who, who demand content. I mean, it seems to me there's, I'm flooded, I'm covered, I'm bombarded with movies now from every place in the world. Yeah. I saw a Russian movie the other day called Silver Skates. It was excellent and it yeah. was all Russian. My goodness yep. gracious, they, and they rose up to the level of high production values, good acting, good story, good sets. The whole thing was really marvelous. And mm -hmm. I'm saying to myself, this is uh, sort of like the, uh, that, the House of the Flying Daggers, you know, back when, when China showed us that it could do high production value. It's all over the world. It's every country you can yep. think of. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of competition. It's outside of Hollywood, don't you think? And yep. people are watching that stuff because they are tired of the pulp fiction. Uh, they want to see something yes. else. They want to travel. They want to open their, their minds because they're mm -hmm. stuck at home. So I right. think it's changed the viewing audience, don't you? I do. And I think um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how much theatrical attendance uh, we see going forward. 
uh, the movie chains have been as stressed as every other segment of the business. Um, and, you know, I, I think for, for me and my wife, even before COVID, we didn't go to movies very much at all uh, because there was such rich content available in, in streaming, even though, even though the experience of watching a film on a screen versus watching it on a little little screen is 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 night and day. It's 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 a totally totally different experience. But whether or not when this you know fog clears and we have a healthier uh, environment, um, it'll be interesting to see you know how much and and again you know what what's more convenient about watching uh, on te on television besides the breadth of content you're talking about is you can pause it, go shishi, get your nice beverage. And I mean, you know, the, the, the convenience aspect is just incredible. The downside, of course, is that like with, for us, we're addicted to these uh, uh, Korean uh, teleseries and films. Who uh, they're uh, marvelous. And you start it, you know, at nine o'clock at night and next thing you know, it's three o'clock in the morning. And so it's nuts. It's totally nuts. But it's certainly become a part, a major part of our consumption. Um, and it also, you know, I, I think we've yet to have anything like a sustained series in the in the sense of like Game of Thrones or other cable, um, you know, uh, uh, projects. I look forward to hopefully someday soon getting a product like that, because those kind those kinds of formats allow deeper development of character. They allow, um, I mean, one of the things in the Korean stuff is you'll get the characters. They're like they're, they're, they'll 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 be standing looking at each other for an extended period of time. When's the last time you saw that on Five O or Magnum PI? You know, <laughs> no time, no no. Time. And, and so, um, anyway, that's that's my that's my hope as far as new initiatives going forward is to get something in here that's got a got legs to it over a, a extended period. The, the Korean stuff is either like sixteen epi hour episodes or one we just watched with thirty two hours. I mean, it's it's talking a chunk of my life. I, I can't get back because I watched that thing, but. I, I know exactly what you mean because I'm having the same life experience that has taken um, a good part of my life over the past year. And I love it. I enjoy it. I, it's a discovery whenever you find one. And sometimes you find it completely by accident. And there yes. it is. It tumbles into your life and it changes your way of thinking. It's, you know, every movie is an education of some kind. And I feel that we are getting educated as never before. That's but, true. But taking all of that, um, it seems to me that you can't help but making a buck these days in filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So you know, after the first six months of COVID, uh, when these film producers uh, were looking around for locations and they found that Hawaii had good numbers, relatively speaking, and the mainland was you know, going a little nuts in major cities, they come out here. And that's what led them out here. They were, it was as simple as providing a safe set. Um, and they and they I guess they talked to each other. They all came out here all at the same time and laid work all over the state. And that's quite remarkable. But at the same time that that was happening, cable was becoming more popular um, mm -hmm. and people were watching it. So the, uh, my, my guess is that a, a given production raised more money um, with the cable providers uh, than it would have before all of this happened. And so there was, you know, the money was all over the place and it was worthwhile, you know, coming to Hawaii just so they could make lots of movies. And they have. My question to you, though, is, you know, is this sustainable? We have more, more going on now. Donnie Dawson in that article and uh, uh, Tracy Bennett in Maui very clearly believe that, you know, the, these are the good times. But, mm -hmm. you know, anything could happen. We live in a fragile world, both in terms of health and politics and policy um, and government in general. Um, query, is it sustainable for Hawaii? Can you count on it, say, a year from now? Well, uh, I would say that any predictions about this very strange business called show business are, are fraught with, <laughs> with uncertainty uh, because things do change. One of, 
one of the things we did enjoy, uh, and it counts for a, much of this new and, and, and vibrant activity, has to do with our nationwide good numbers on the COVID side. We're like number four or five in terms of, of, of top, top, top here uh, of getting, getting through it. And so, you know, it's one of the reasons our real estate market is red hot and on fire. Uh, people are bailing from California big time. Um, and of course, we're the realtors anyway are, are bracing for the uh, Asian invasion uh, uh, for more investors. Uh, and so, uh, you know, and also too, there's another aspect to it, which is that CBS, going back to um, certainly the old, the original 5.0, uh, has really a allegiance to Hawaii. And, and now NCIS is yet another uh, one that, so we have been incredibly uh, blessed uh, by, in terms of continuity and sustainability because of the Columbia Broadcasting System. And I don't see that going diminishing. And of course, NCIS is until it opens another door and we're all hoping that it will be like the other jurisdictions NCIS has a long and, 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 and fruitful life. Um, so yeah, that, I, that, the whole the whole uh, what is it NCI thing um, is is very popular city yes. by city, and we're yes. a great candidate for providing an interesting background on the you know the NCI kind of plot. Um, so I think you know that really that one will really last. So right. you were talking before the show about the the differentiation between those kinds of productions that will last and and keep providing value for the economy of the state. And those kind of productions that are one-off, can you make that distinction for us? Well, um, I, the, the, the example I gave was uh, we had a, a John Travolta, Bruce uh, Willis, uh, of at least partially filmed on Maui. That they came and went for pretty quickly. Um, it's the nature. It's the nature of uh, feature films, big or small, that they're one-offs. The continuity, interestingly enough, the continuity here in Hawaii are the crews. Um, uh, uh, speaking of, uh, we, were, we were talking about a friend of yours or not, uh, who was on 5-0 and uh, was killed without words. I, I, my last 5-0 my, my gig um, was scripted with with dialogue, and I spoke it, and we had multiple scenes. And th anyway, it turned out to be totally. And I was paid as a as a talking actor, thank God, and so I still get residual. But it turned up in the final edit as being almost what you described, which is the guy comes in to do you beat, beat, and then boom, gets hit in the back of the head, and he's dead. So, <laughs> and it was all described by the lady the canadian actress who was walking talking about it uh so um you know uh, that's you know that's that's hollywood right it's you know you 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 work and work and you wind up on the cutting room floor that's that that whole thing but um i've sort of lost thread about now what was your question <laughs> the difference the difference between the one-offs and the and the serials that are likely to last for a while well, okay, yeah, be, 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 because of the nature of the beast, um, I, I guess um, the the other uh, uh, good supporter of Hawaii as a destination to do films is is The Rock. Uh, he he's done, you know, he did. I think the the one of the last films. In fact, he recruited a lady uh, who was an usher at the signature. Uh, and and she was marvelous, you know. And they shot on Kauai, and and uh, and so you know she's a full fledged member. You know our memberships looking good. You know we're 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 we were huddling around nine hundred for a long time, and now we're like over eleven hundred. Uh, uh, so we're you know we're we're seeing we're seeing the jobs. You know uh, again mostly background jobs, but nonetheless, she's a, a rare exception. Uh, to that, but but yeah, the the, the film the it's they're they're one offs. Um, there are the film credits have go in. Besides our healthy uh, COVID numbers, the film credits play a a, a part in it. Um, 
And um, because, you know, again, the business part of it is how much it's going to cost and how much we're going to make, you know? Sure. But you know, one thing that comes to mind, David, I want, I want to mention to you is my own experience. And sometimes you, you look through, you know, your own, your own view of things, your own lens, so to speak. And maybe you see a la Proust into the future uh, or the past, um, something different. And, and what I see different in my own experience, I wonder about yours, um, is that I, I'm really not so interested in violent movies anymore. There are, I know there are a lot of people out there that are. Right. And, and if you look at the number of movies uh, on, on cable that are violent, it's extraordinary. It, it must be 90%. Uh, right. On the other hand, there are art films and there are feel-good films and there are comedy films that are really very good. Uh, I'm thinking of that Korean, um, what was it? Um, Parasite. About the, say? Parasite. That was excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, the other one was about this family, the, the Korean family that settled. Oh, uh, Minari. Was, yeah, Minari. 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 It's yeah. a very interesting film. There's, there's no yeah. violence in there to speak of. Um, and you say to yourself, well, this is, it makes me think, you know, this educates me, shows me things right. I haven't seen before. And it's not that pulp fiction kind of pulp violent fiction kind of right. thing, you know, with a vengeance plot and we're going to get even and and the mob versus you know and the prosecution and the police and you know haven't we had enough of that? Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that emerging from all of this mix that we have seen in the new mix that we have seen in the past year, that we may have genres that are emerging that will change the industry somehow. Do you agree? Here's the problem, and it's not just in the United States. Um, I can tell you um, um, there is a perception of, in some countries and in their industries of a uh, um, basic dumbing down that they believe they need to make the product, they need to make the uh, car chases and the car bang ups and all, because that's the only thing that's going to get them in the seats. Uh, the Philippines, in my view, is is guilty of that, and and most of that most of their product is is either uh, violent uh, or is violent and you know I mean it's and and the, the it, it, and it's a fundamentally different audience viewpoint about what they want. Now you know I think you and I probably have a view of something. I, I mean. Sense and Sensibility was a film that was still lingers in my memory as being a nonstop, heartbeat-filled film. It just, it, it just, there was no dead air. There was, it was just, and 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 telling a story that has a human heart to it is is still a rare commodity, and um, and the only excuse for the industry not doing more of them because they don't see there's there's an, any profit in them and that you know becomes both a industry perception problem and also it it, it reflects a level of sophistication or lack of sophistication um, with our audiences but you know and again show business right theater the roots of theater go back you know in in this country uh to uh, uh the, the um the director, um, Anne Bogart, uh, wrote an essay about the very first reported decision relating to theater had to do with, uh, they performed in a tavern in Virginia and, uh, and they got busted for doing blasphemy, right? It was blasphemous. So the whole thing went up to court and the, the, there's a still a trial transcript of this. And this is what we're talking in the 1600s, right? And the, the judge ruled that, no, 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 it wasn't blasphemous, it was entertainment. And so Bogart makes this point that that is the root of our theater and industries, right? Entertainment industries, entertainment. Now, entertainment doesn't have to be the car chases and the violence, but some it's a segment of our audience. And so I think as long as we have audiences who respond to that and are eager or or the other the other thing besides the violence thing is these 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 oversized um sort of cg effect load loaded uh you know 
future is, you know, and the Marvel, the whole the Marvel thing, some of the Marvel things are not bad, but, but I think, again, it's of a scale so beyond a human level, a human uh, sized story um, that leaves me flat. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm just a, old dude you know wasting away in paradise so so you know <laughs> I'm, I'm with you david i can't <laughs> I, but i really can't watch that stuff so much anymore no, and no. i wonder you know wonder you know you say it's the, the movie maker looking at the bottom line and they make decisions on that basis is trying to meet a market he's trying to satisfy a market right. but then the market it, it seems to me changes everything changes and the market changes and and people are looking for an old-fashioned escape this is escape entertainment this takes right. me away from the humdrum of being locked up in my house or for that matter locked up in my job or locked up right. in a life that doesn't really give me extension so i go i go and watch cable or i go to the movies and i get extension i i get to travel i get to hear foreign languages i get to see all these things that make me feel that justice will out, you know, and violence may be the way to get there and so forth. Um, and I think that, that that is probably changing, that there's a greater demand these days, a greater frustration perhaps with the way things work in our lives and therefore a greater demand for escape entertainment. Don't, don't you agree? Well, let me put a real big wet blanket on all that. Just check out our polarization in our politics, the uh, fake news, uh, the, the, you know, it, it, it's ugly out there, Jay. And, and uh, we're is somewhat insulated from uh, it here in Hawaii. Although, um, you know, the homeboys were also January 6th present in Italian floor from Hawaii. We had a contingent from Hawaii over there. That's the reality. And that's when you think about it, first of all, it's there are two there are two uh, communities of of audience. And I would say to you that though that you know schizophrenic uh, wor world that we now inhabit in our politics, but also in our culture, it's a real big question on any change that's going to come the way you are certainly hoping for uh, and i hope for too uh, yeah. so you know that's the, that's that's the killer well let's let's talk about hope for a minute we're almost out of time <laughs> here and um you know i hope uh, as i'm sure you have and and many people in the industry and and certainly the the film offices in both city and state county and state um, have hoped for job opportunities. Okay? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, the, the numbers in the Star Advertiser article were pretty impressive. We, we, we are hiring a lot of people. Some of them are, are just serving lunch, you know, to the, yep. uh, you know, the, the production staff, but others are actually involved in the production. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, um, you know, is this something that a, a local person, say a graduate of high school or UH or some college in the in in, in Hawaii um, should focus on um, not necessarily in uh, well maybe in making the film in part but more in supporting the film um, handling all the logistics around the film getting a job getting a job is this something where there's a a promising job market that a graduate of a local school a, a Hawaii graduate should should um in, investigate or is it better not to do that to go something else you know there's a real question the article raised the real question about whether this is um a, a, so important what's happened with this increased amount of film work in hawaii that we should see it um as a as another uh, uh you know as as a as a sector of innovation okay uh, which we haven't really concentrated on uh, or whether we should just, you know, um, spend our time and money and our futures in, in the hospitality, hospitality industry. I mean, how significant is this in terms of diversification? Well, I will tell you, UHACM, the Academy for Creative Media, uh, the state creative um, 
and I always bubble the, the, the name, but there are, we have local initiatives to support the growth of this industry. Uh, so it does become a significant uh, part of uh, our diverse, you know, um, opportunities. Um, if, if speaking right now, again, one of the things uh, that um, the last 5.0 I did reminded me how very special our local crews are. Now, again, these are like Teamsters. They are also uh, members of other, other unions. But when you get the sort of the combined and this is just for one episode, right? You get the combined back of the camera, local, an incredible aloha spirit. I mean, a real, real sense of family and 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 of ohana. And you get the okay, granted mostly background actors. It, it's magic. It's absolutely magic. But 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 as a growth industry, compare it to the number of jobs that the hospitality. Uh, area, or it's, it's not. It's not going to happen. It's. It's just. It's. It, there's not a specific gravity enough of opportunities. Um, and again, if somehow, I mean, Los Angeles initially in the filmmaking industry was an out, outlier, right? It was all in New York and New Jersey. That's where all the film was done. And then they 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 fled to the sunnier climes. They've got a pretty. You know, it's it's like the Roman, uh, the Italian studio that uh, Fellini did all his film work in. It, it's they've got a lock on it, and it's partly history, and it's partly um, it's it's a lot it's a lot to overcome to imagine that that center would ever migrate to Hawaii in in any big big way. Number one, we're expensive, we are fall short. There's a lot of reasons for that, but um, and and you know. The, on the NCIS, I, I, I think we all of us are pulling for that series. I just hope, I just hope that they can, uh, getting back to the script, they can really infuse some of that material with something that's legitimately Hawaiian in terms of their art realities here in Hawaii, because it's there. That's a that's great re, uh, resource material, and it's been neglected for ever since. Yeah, yeah, neglected or, or worse, um, yeah, distorted, mis, mis, misconstrued, you know, yes. mis, misstated. <clears throat> well, David, we're out of time, and I really appreciate you coming down. I hope we can do this again. This is really valuable to understand the industry and and where it's going and what opportunities it offers for the state. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jay. It's always a pleasure to uh, trade stories with you. <laughs> Aloha, David. <laughs>